James Reeves, TFB TV SHOT Show 2024 here at Mossberg with my Moss bro, Jeremy Stafford. You guys have seen this wonderful hunk of man <laughs> on TFB TV before. It's an honor always to have you on the you program. No, man, anything. I love just being in your just being in your general area. In my space. Yeah, you're in my space, yeah. The, man, the, no. the aura. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I get it. It's, it's, the aura is pretty good. Like, it's pretty good. We have an exclusive from Mossberg. You guys know I love Mossberg shotguns. I mean, it's really like, I hate mentioning other companies' names and videos, but it's like Mossberg and Beretta pretty much these days are yeah. the only shotguns that I mess with anymore. Uh, you have some law enforcement models. This is my uh, first time seeing. Yeah. Like literally, this is my you, first time five minutes ago. So. You're the you're the you're the first uh, yeah. first first <laughs> non NDA. To, to take a look at this, and, and that's by design because we love you. You're awesome. Uh, oh, of course, and I love you guys too. We've got a 590A1 yep. right here. What is different about this versus just your regular ass 590A1? Okay, so when it comes to pump shotguns, when it comes to fighting shotguns, hyperbole aside, there's nothing revolutionary, right? It's a pump fighting shotgun. Yeah, sure. However, we think that the evolutionary aspect has been neglected by just about everybody. So what we've done is we've taken these guns and we've looked at what we can do to make it better from a fighting aspect and a training aspect and a logistical aspect. And we've incorporated all of those into these guns. So I'll start from top to bottom. So you can see right there, we've got our, um, site, our plate for the optic, but it has a ghost ring incorporated into it. So. Unlike some of our competitors, we didn't go cheap, we didn't go plastic. This is meant to be yeah. a fighting shotgun. So it's metal, top to bottom, and uh, it's got a metal ghost ring, super low profile. So it's super low profile for a couple of reasons. One, we wanted to keep it as low to the bore as possible for the math, because these guns are optimized for federal LE-132, or an equivalent load and for the low recoil slugs. So you're looking at like a one ounce slug moving like 1200, 1250 feet per second, right? So these sites, the math is done and is gonna put you where you need to be. And, um, uh, and let's not gloss over the fact that you have an optic cut here built into the receiver for the 407, Exactly, foot and that's where we're going with it. So we look at it as this that's is huge. for- I mean, it's huge. This is for that person maybe that is not quite adopted to the red dots or for those agencies that haven't gotten on the red dot train right, yet sure. so it's we can get them too. into this yeah, it is yeah, we yeah. can get them into this gun and then they can upgrade it they can That's drop smart. that 407 507 k yeah. anything with an uh, rmsc cut um the other reason it's low is because these guns are meant to be racked meaning put into a rack and when you start getting above the bore with large sights, big red dots, things like that, it interferes with the ability for the guns to be placed into a rack in a car. Right. Lastly, from a training standpoint, one of the biggest problems with training new shooters with shotguns, especially if you're looking at like agencies, right, where you have, you know, 20 shooters on the line, is when the sights are higher than the line of bore, their faces start to creep up. Right, yeah. When their faces start to creep up, you make space and that gun and starts sucks. to recoil <laughs> yeah. and it starts to beat the hell out of their face. So they have these horrible experiences and they never want to yeah. train with a shotgun. Bro, you know better than uh, like anybody, you got to train with a shotgun. It is not a rookie it's not weapon. Pleasant. Yeah, especially no. when it feels like you're getting punched in the face by a nine year old. You, you know? got to, yeah, yeah, you got to put in the time. So we did that and so that low sight and that, even with the red dot, that low profile, it's going to keep that shooter's cheek on the stock. We've also changed our uh, stock on this. It's kind of like a Bantam Plus. So it's not a true Bantam and it's not like a 12 inch, but it's also not 14 inch. It's gonna be just under 13 inches length of pull. And we found with that length of pull, the real short people can use it and the real tall people can also use it. And everybody can get a cheek weld and everybody can find that dot or that rear sight. Like so a Goldilocks stock. It really is the a closest Goldie thing. Stock. If Goldie you will. Stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys can use that. Yeah, I'll take royalty check. Okay, no course, worries. As usual. Um, the next evolution would be an adjustable stock. And, you know, honestly, that's something we're working on, but these things don't happen overnight. Right. Sure. So the next thing we've, we're, we're going to talk about is the fact that uh, you see a Cerakote. So here's the thing with Cerakote. Cerakote can be done cheaply or Cerakote can be done well. When Cerakote is done well, it is more abrasion resistant and more corrosion resistant than parkerizing or bluing. 
So what we've done is we've invested into Cerakote and we actually have a large industrial oven that we use now where we can do the quantities of guns that we want to do and that we can ensure that the finish is the way that it's supposed to be. So being able to control those temperatures has been able to allow us to produce a very abrasion resistant Cerakote finish. Mm -hmm. You awesome. know what I mean? And it looks great too. And it, it does really look does. good. We went with dark gray because one, it is intended to be a tactical gun from top to bottom. And two, uh, we wanted it to look a little bit different than the stock guns. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because there's, good, there's gonna be a little bit of a premium on it. We want people to have a little pride of ownership. Yeah, yeah, understood. So the next two things I'm gonna talk about, I think you're really gonna dig. So I see you keep looking right in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. We've relieved all the edges. Yeah, so big, com that. big complaint. I mean, you're, you know, Uncle Clint. It's like putting your thumb in a box yeah, of razor, razor blades. blades. Yep, yep. So we, <laughs> look, that guy is so quotable. <laughs> he, he is. Pardon my language. We give a shit, mm -hmm. and we give a shit about the end user. This and is CFB TV. You can say whatever you want. So yeah, these people are degenerates. <laughs> so we went in and we're like, how can we evolve it to make it better? And that's one of the things we did. So uh, ejection port and loading port. It's relieved. This is pre-production. The production is going to be even more relieved. Okay. So it's going to be really slicked up. Okay. What else we got on the? Oh, the front sight. Yeah. So we got a fiber optic with fiber ears. Fiber optic, protected ears, also low profile, uh, to avoid damage in the rack. Other than that, that's where we're at with the uh, with the 590 series. You know, we we really think that this kind of uh, epitomizes the um, the best of the breed moving forward right now. And you know? pricing and availability, too soon to say. Right. Uh, I mean, this is like availability brand. this spring. Oh, really? Yeah, that late, fast. late, late right. spring. Um, pricing, uh, I'm not exactly sure yet. I don't want to be misquoted. Yeah, don't. But don't do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you'll get dragged. The 940. Go ahead. So the 940 Professional, you'll see the same concept when it comes to the sights. Low profile, front and rear. Again, that's going to aid it in uh, being racked, taking it in and out of the rack. So on the other 940s, it has a uh, choke tube in it. Right. With this, we've removed that. It's a cylinder bore, but we've kept that heavy barrel. Right. And what we found is it makes for a very accurate slug shooting mm -hmm. semi-automatic. Yeah, sure. Which, which for is us nice. is important. Yeah. So we kept those sights. We do anticipate most people are going to be taking the plate out and replacing it with a red dot. I would. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the first thing that happens in sure. my house. You know. Um, but again, we want to be mindful of the fact that there's people that are in agencies that might not be able to do that. So. We, we, we want them to know that we're, we're thinking of them and that we want to build in that adaptability so that they can adopt those later on. Take a look at the new safety. Oh, gotcha. You've got your new safety right there, the old safety, like the stepped up old safety right here. Yeah, more ergonomic, I get it. Definitely more ergonomic and you know, it's not like we've had a rash of uh, safeties breaking. Right, sure. But. You know, it, the mil spec does call for it, so we do need to maintain that that steel piece. Personally, with my own personal guns, I'm switching it out to the new one. Yeah, I, I mean, I would too. Yeah, yeah it's pretty nice. Uh, QD, sockets, QD sockets, front and rear, left and right, uh, which we felt was important to have on a fighting shotgun. You know, of course, when it comes to fighting shotguns, a sling and a light, you got to have it. Yes. And so we have provisions for this. Now, you and I both know that those front things tend to walk a little yeah, bit yeah. not a big fan next generation of uh stock will will address that somewhat um but yeah. it was important for us to make sure that when this gun launched we addressed lights and we addressed slings right so we did both with that um right. again we're always looking at ways to improve it and i, I can guarantee you there will be a couple of little improvements uh, up, in, up in that front end right there because I know that your viewers are going to ask about it because it's something that you always talk about. Right, right, right. And sure. we agree. Yeah, yeah, it, sure. it just it takes a while to find a better way to do right. something. No, you know I understand I mean? that completely. Shotguns a little bit like crocodiles, right? That's you know, right. where it's like they were pretty much perfect when they evolved in it and they've yeah. been like relatively unchanged for 350 million years. You can do little things to exactly. make them better. And the fact that you guys are doing that instead of sitting on your asses and having the exact same shotgun that you had, you know, whatever damn near half a century ago. You know, it's an interesting time in shotgun development, right? Because we, we are seeing a big move from pump to semi, but there's still, when you look at overall numbers, there's still huge numbers in both. And, you know, we've had certain competitors that have had um, issues. So there's been these opportunities for us to kind of push resources into making a simple experience better. 
Sure. And that's what we want to do. We want to focus on things, our core products. We want to focus on making them more shootable. We want to focus on that end user, making them more effective. And we want to focus on the fact that we want these guns to be easier to train with. Jeremy, thanks a ton Thank for being you, on the program, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We're bringing you more from SHOT Show 2024.